Welcome to Computer Science 320's 2015 Winter 1 Midterm 1 Practice Problems. We're on part 4 of problem 1. And let's see, we are now drawing a recursion tree for this algorithm, Keddy of A, labeled by the amount of time taken by each recursive call to Keddy and the total time for each level of calls, both in terms of n for an arbitrary value of n that is a power of 4 greater than 1. So we're labeling the times, uh, both of them, in terms of n. And the n is a power of 4, which means we're in the recursive case. Uh, and it just says greater than 1 because 4 to the 0, that's a power of 4, 1. But it would fall into this base case anyway because that length is odd. So we're dealing with a power of 4. And what's nice about powers of 4, well, when we divide this up into fourths, we're either, either going to be down to an array of size 1, or we're going to get an array that is yet another power of 4 as the result. So this is going to behave nicely. It's going to go to the recursive case over and over again until it gets down to a base case when the array is of length 1. It's not going to cut off partway through. and That should make our analysis a little bit better. So this is going to be a typical recursion tree, just like any other recursion tree. and. This is going to be a typical recursion tree, just like any other recursion tree. And so we can just start off by drawing ourselves a top node. And we can label it n with the understanding that n is a power of 4, which means we're going to go into this recursive case. Another way of thinking of that is if you look back at the recurrence relation we created a while back, we should expect t of n, until we get down to the leaves, to be equal to 2t of n over 4 plus 1, because that's what we computed before. So we can actually draw this tree just based on that recurrence relation instead of worrying about the code. We've already abstracted away from the code. Let's do that. Let's start in on the tree. And it says here it's going to be 2t of n over 4. That reflects the fact that there are two recursive calls on the same size problem. So I'm just going to have two children of this recursive call. And each of them is going to take time t of n over 4. I'm just going to put n over 4 in here. n over 4, n over 4. So those will each take time t of n over 4, which means up here we're going to have just one step for the problem combination. At the next level, we're going to be doing two problem combinations, one for this node, one for that node. So we're going to take two steps, and each of these will have two children because of this two. Now the size of those two children is going to be n over 4 divided by 4. So that'll be n over 16. So we're going to have ooh, lots of tiny little n over 16 problems. There's four of them, and again, each of them is paying this plus one cost. So we're going to have to pay one point, if you like, for each of these four nodes, and that's going to give us four at this level. And now this is going to continue until we get down to a base case. I'm a little squished for space on my base case. I'm just going to plug it in here. And the question is, how many levels is it going to take before we get to that base case? Well, we can see we've got n here, we've got n over 4 here, we've got n over 16 here. We're going to keep dividing by 4, which means this is going to be n over 4 to the i, if i is our level. So then this would be level 0. n over 4 to the 0, that's n over 1. That's just n. This is level 1. This is level 2. This is level k here. What is k? How far down do we have to go before n over 4 to the i gets to our base case? Remember, our base case now is going to be when the length is 1. Since this is a power of 4, n, we're only going to get to the if part of this if-else statement when we get down to 1. So we can find out what k is by just setting n over 4 to the k to be equal to 1. So I'm going to do that up in the upper right here. I'm running a little low on space down below. So n over 4 to the k is equal to 1. n is equal to 4 to the k. We can take the log of both sides. That's equal to k times the log of 4. 
And the log base 2 of 4 is just 2. 2 to the 2 is equal to 4, so this is 2k. So 2k is log of n. k is log of n divided by 2. Okay, so how many levels will we go? Well, all in all, there's going to be about log of n over 2 levels. There's actually log of n over 2 plus 1 here, but about log of n over 2 levels. Now, what will the cost of the bottom level be? Well, the costs here are starting as 2 to the 0, and then 2 to the 1, and then 2 to the 2, because the number of recursive calls at each level is doubling. So we've got two recursive calls uh, just below the root. We've got four just below that. And we double over and over again until we get down to the bottom here. When we get down to the bottom, we're going to have, well, 2 to the 0 at level 0, 2 to the 1 at level 1, 2 to the 2 at level 2. So we're looking at 2 to the k down here. We're going to have 2 to the k separate nodes. Well, what's 2 to the k? k is the log of n divided by 2. Right, so this is 2 to the log of n divided by 2. And that's 2 to the log of n raised to the 1 half. 2 to the log of n, that's one of our log identities. Logs and powers are kind of inverses of each other, so 2 to the log of n is just n. So that is square root of n. So we're going up to square root of n here. And this is a, a, a sum of powers. That's the kind of sum that hopefully you have memorized. 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus dot 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 up to some power of 2. Well, you can try it out. 1 alone is just 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. That's one more, uh, excuse me, one less than a power of 2. It's also one more. Uh, 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7, which is one less than a power of 2, 8. 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8, that's 7 plus 8 is 15. That's 1 less than a power of 2, 16. We could prove this inductively that we're going to end up with the next power of 2 minus 1, but I'm not going to worry about that. That's something you can just figure out on your own. If you feel like it, we can use it as an identity. The sum i equals 0 to, kind of running out of letters here, uh, 2, excuse me, sum i equals 0 to j, of 2 to the i, that's just 2 to the j plus 1, minus 1, like that. And we can apply that to sum up all of these costs, because this is the cost of all the rows, all the way down to the bottom of the tree. Well, when we sum all of those up, we're going up to k here, right? We're summing up to k. So k sits in this position right here, which means k should also sit in this position over here. So we're going to end up with 2 to the k plus 1, minus 1. And since we're really only worried about asymptotics, we're actually not going to worry about that minus 1. We're not going to worry about the plus 1 either. That's just going to multiply our result by 2. So we're going to end up actually with 2 square root of n minus 1, 2 square root of n minus 1. But that's not going to matter much. What we really care about is we are going to end up with something asymptotically in square root of n. So this takes theta of square root of n time. Oh, excuse me. We haven't been asked for a bound yet, but I'm going to be careful saying theta here. Um, let's, let's just put a question mark on this. Is this really theta? Because we have given a theta bound on a recurrence relation that looks like this when n is greater than 1, and it looks like constant when n is equal to 1. This is definitely a theta bound on that sort of recurrence relation. But that's not quite the recurrence relation for this problem. It's, it only works that way when n is a power of 4. So let's come back to that issue later. OK, that completes this problem. For our next problem, we'll move on to the next part, which is going to be very related to this. So I'm going to keep this ink around when we work on our next part.